now we want to begin working with forms in a much more detailed fashion. Now I want to warn you up front that we're going to get into some areas here which are a source of a great deal of confusion for new users of JavaScript. And I'll do my best to explain these concepts clearly so you understand what's going on. But I have simply typed up a script here which I'm displaying and I've saved as js14.htm. One of the things that I want to mention, uh, there are a number of scripts which I have included on the CD which use just the beginning and the closing script tag without the attribute language equals JavaScript. And I've done that simply because I was a little lazy. Um, this is fine for your educational purposes because the browser tends to default to JavaScript when it sees a script tag. But when you actually put your HTML pages up on the web, you should specify the attribute language equals JavaScript. Okay, the first thing I want to do is, is look at the setup of the form that I have on the web page here. And uh, first off, the form begins here. It ends here. There are two elements in the form. The first element in the form is a text field. It has no value in it at this point. The name is uh, what to say. So I've given it a name. And the length of the field basically is 50, 50 characters. I put a break tag after that so that we'll separate it from the following line. The following line is input type equals buttons. I'm going to create a button. A button is going to say show me the alert. And when you click on the button, it's going to call the JavaScript function do alert, very similar to the last uh, button that we set up to uh, trigger a JavaScript function. Now, the do alert function deserves a, a lot of explanation. So here's the function. It's actually quite short. And it looks very similar uh, in a lot of respects to the last function that we created for a button. But this line could be very, very troublesome. Sort of what, what does this mean? So message is a variable which I have, or to which I have assigned a value of the value of that field called what to say. And that, that text element there is the first element of the first form of the document that I'm working in. Now, in JavaScript, all the forms on the page become part of a forms array. So this refers to the document object, which is basically the page itself. On that, in that document, there are forms, and the forms are numbered from zero, which is the first form, all the way up to however many there are. So this is what's known as the forms array, and this points to the first element in the array in JavaScript. Okay, don't ask why there, it isn't a one. It, it just basically is a convention in programming when you deal with arrays uh, that you begin with zero as the first element. Now, inside that form, there are numerous elements. Those elements also become part of an elements array in which there are several um, elements or several values here inside the brackets. The first element refers to the text field. The second element, which would be elements bracket one, would refer to the button itself. Okay? We're not really interested in retrieving information about the button itself because the button is static. The value, however, is a property of the text element uh, object, which is an object inside of a form object inside of the document object in the uh, web page. This is an example of what's known as the document object model. 
hierarchy. So what we're doing is we're sort of drilling down through the document to find out the value that's been entered into the text field. We're going to get that information and we're going to pass that information into an alert when the user clicks on the button. And I'll show you how that works in just a second here. So I'm going to minimize this window. I'm going to take js14.htm and drag it into the uh, browser window. And I'm going to type in a little message, hello, this works. And I'm going to click on the button, show me the alert. And sure enough, it passes the text from this text field into the alert box. And you can continue doing this for as long as you want. So this is an example of how JavaScript refers to an element in a form in a web page. What you should note here is that the JavaScript is very generic looking and it's very difficult to figure out what's actually going on in the page because you've got to look for the first form and the first element of the form and then check out to see what the value is in order to find out what's going on. So that is something that you've got to keep in mind.